So how do we differentiate on a flat screen between something that is in the foreground and something that's in the background? Well, a bit of terminology here. The surface of the screen is called the screen plane. Anything in the background is in positive space and anything in the foreground is in negative space. And we'll see why that is in a minute. Now, when we show uh, something on a screen, let's say, for example, a car, and we show a 2D car on a normal cinema screen, it will appear to be the distance away that the screen is from the viewer. It'll appear to be on the screen in the cinema. Now, if we want to make that car appear as though it is behind the screen, we need to create a separate left and right image of that car, with the left image going to the left eye and the right image going to the right eye. Now, if you consider when you are looking at something a long way away, your eyes are pretty much parallel. They're looking straight at that distant object. So if we want the car to appear to be behind the screen, we want our eyes to be looking parallel or straight. So what we have to do is to separate apart those left and right images by a distance, if we want it to appear to be at infinity, that is actually roughly equal to the distance between our eyes, about 65 millimetres. Now, if we want to make that same car appear to be in front of the screen, coming out of the screen and into the cinema, then we have to mimic the way our eyes behave when we're looking at something very close to us. Let's say my finger right now, as I look at my finger here, very close in front of my eyes, my eyes are converging. They are pointing in at my finger. Now, if you're looking at the screen and you want to make something appear to be closer than the screen, then obviously the viewer's eyes have to be more converged, pointing in more than they would be if they're looking at the screen. So to do that, we actually have to swap the left and right views over relative to a object that would be on the screen. So that the left view of the car is actually on the right hand side of the screen and the right view of the car is actually on the left side of the screen. This forces the viewer's eyes to actually cross over. So when we want to make things on the screen appear in the background, we're, making, we're mimicking parallel vision or parallel eyes. And when we want it in the foreground, we're mimicking converged or crossing over almost eyes. Um, a, quite a hard concept perhaps to understand, certainly a very difficult one to describe. Now taking near and far objects on the screen to the next step. When you have an object that is behind the screen, and remember behind the screen is in positive space, the difference between the left and the right image is called the disparity. And if you actually measure that on the screen, that will give you a distance. And that distance would be the disparity. So perhaps uh, in this example here, if the difference between the left view and the right view is two and a half inches, 65 millimetres, that would be the positive disparity, the disparity of the object behind the screen. And similarly, any objects appearing in the foreground or in front of the screen, they are said to have negative disparity. And why is it negative? Well, it's because your eyes are uh, towing in or angling in. It's a negative um, angle, if you'd like. So that's the way I remember it, certainly. Negative in front of the screen, positive behind the screen, and the dis difference between the left and right images is known as the disparity. Now, one of our biggest headaches with a stereoscopic production is that the disparity changes with screen size. Um, if you have a small screen with let's say 10 centimeters of disparity and you scale that image up onto perhaps an IMAX screen, that 10 centimeters of disparity could become as much as a meter of disparity. And that's a big problem. Now, why is this a problem? 
Well, let's think about this for a minute. Our eyes are 65 millimeters apart. And as I've said before, when we look way off into the distance, our eyes are parallel or maybe just converging the tiniest of tiny amounts. The one thing that our eyes never do is look apart. They never diverge. So if we had a meter of disparity in a cinema, let's say, the left eye would be trying to look over that way to see its view through the filtered glasses and the right eye would be trying to look that way to see its view. Our eyes would be being forced to diverge, to do something they don't naturally or normally do. And this would cause eye strain and headaches because our brain is not used to doing this. Now, if you do shoot a lot of 3D, one thing you will find is you become much more tolerant to doing uh, gymnastics with your eyes and things like that. But a regular cinema goer will have a really hard time, or a television viewer, trying to watch something where their eyes are being forced to look apart. So that means that our disparity on the screen that we're showing our production on should never really exceed 65 millimeters, two and a half inches. Now, we can allow about one degree of look apart. Most people will tolerate that very well uh, without any major issues. So we can go a little bit wider than that if the viewer is a reasonable distance from the screen. But what this does mean is that we need to calculate our disparity when we shoot. The disparity, the difference between the left and right images is governed by how far apart the camera lenses are. It's actually quite a simple concept. If you want to try and work out how far away something is that's a long way away, one of the things that we do, or I do certainly, is I will move my head from side to side because it creates greater parallax. The points of view, the two things that I see with my eyes, the difference is much greater the further apart the two points of view are. So if you have two cameras in a 3D rig and you move them further and further apart, the differences between the two images, the left and the right images, will also increase. And so the disparity will increase. Um, so we can see that our on-screen disparity is governed largely by the interaxial, that's the distance between the centers of the camera lenses, interaxial, and the greater the interaxial, the greater the disparity. So we have to calculate how far apart or measure how far apart our cameras are, knowing the screen size we're going to be showing our production on, and figure out what is the optimum spacing to get an acceptable amount of disparity on the screen. Now we will look at this in more depth uh, as we go along. Um, but what I will say is there are various stereoscopic calculators for iPad, iPhone, you can get applications, you can get PC programs that will allow you to calculate all these things because there are various factors you need to put into the calculation. Clearly screen size, bigger the screen, the bigger the disparity. Focal length, because the magnification of the lens will change how large, object, how big objects are, so that will also affect the disparity. You also then have um, how far away you are from the subject and various other things. And you put all these parameters into your stereoscopic calculator and it will give you a calculated interaxial to use for your shoot. Now that does sound very complex and complicated, and it is to be honest, um, but there is a method that you can use to shoot 3D that, we look, that we'll be looking at at the end of this series of videos called the derobe method. Very, very simple, very straightforward method.